risk assessment simply means looking at each specific task and considering what is the safest way to complete it. This helps us become aware of the hazards involved in doing the job and taking action to prevent injury. As a building or construction worker, you are obliged to ensure you only carry out construction work you are competent to do, report significant risks, cooperate with others and coordinate work to ensure the health and safety of you and your co-workers, ensure you notify a supervisor of accidents and near misses, and follow site health and safety rules and procedures. The aim is to develop a safety culture communicating methods of work and ensuring everyone knows how to work safely every day. Before starting a task, it is essential to think of what is the safest and best way to do it. Documenting this helps in assessing the risks. There are five steps to completing a risk assessment. Document the activity. Assemble those involved in the activity and write down the tasks step by step. Identify the significant hazards. Next to each task, identify what part may cause injury to those doing the work or to anyone else nearby. Document the control measures. For each identified hazard, list the measures that need to be put in place to eliminate or minimize any likely risk of injury to those involved. Identify who is responsible. Document the name of the person responsible for implementing the control measure. And finally, monitor and review. Make sure the activity is supervised to ensure the documented process is being followed. The documentation should be reviewed whenever an activity changes, when there is a change of personnel, or after an appropriate length of time. This documentation provides a written record of the procedures to be used on a task. As it is a record that can be used in court, it should be signed off by the parties who have responsibility for the tasks. When risks are identified, control measures can be implemented and followed. These measures are known as the hierarchy of hazard controls. You must address each hazard with a solution from the hierarchy in the following order. Firstly, elimination, substitution, isolation, engineering controls, administrative controls and personal protective equipment. Always address the hazard from the top down until the risk is eliminated or controlled. These control measures are often used in combination with each other. A hazard is something which, in context, has the potential to cause harm. A useful way to categorize hazards is to identify them as physical, chemical, electrical and biological. Then look at each work area to see if any of these apply. A more direct way to consider hazards is to look for scenarios that might occur. Some common construction related hazards are falling from heights, trapped by something collapsing or overturning and being struck by a vehicle. These hazardous situations are likely to cause sudden and acute injuries. There are other hazards that may cause chronic long-term harm that must also be identified, such as contact with harmful substances, dust and fumes, exposure to noise and vibration from handheld tools. However hazards are identified, it is almost certain that for any one activity there will be many hazards. Each one has to be risk rated as each will need to be covered by the range of control measures adopted. When you are risk assessing, you need to record your findings in a systematic way, showing a proper check has been made of the inherent hazards and the risk rating for each. You must also factor in other activities that are carried out concurrently. These other activities might create hazards or make the risk of some greater. In a full assessment, these other activities must be taken into account. While companies might issue guidelines for common activities, you must also conduct site-specific hazard identification. Why do you think it is important to follow the correct order in the hierarchy of hazard controls?